Hey VC. So I kind of wanted to do a take two on the music room tour. Uh, my first one was very rushed and very low quality. Kind of shake it around me carrying the camera all over the place. It doesn't really show off very well. But anyways, um, I want to start here. One of the complaints I have if you happen to be watching this and doing your own music room tour. One of the things I'm always interested in is where people sit. And nobody ever shows their chair or whatever it is they're sitting in. They immediately go to their equipment or they immediately go to their records. But I wanted to start here because this is sort of what brought the room together. This is where it started. Uh, this couch here, I was trying to find something to fit into this, this small room. It's really not that big. And that couch from Ikea actually sort of fit the bill. Because not only is it a, a decent little sectional, but it folds out to be a full-size bed so that this room can double as a guest room. And as I was looking through the options, it came in this, this nice, nice 1970s burnt orange color. So to combine with that, I also picked up their green shag carpeting. So it sort of ties in that 70s theme and everything kind of grew from there. Um, going around, I'm not sure if you can see over here. On the right, uh, we have Henry. That's an original pet rock. Of course, we have a uh, lava lamp. A couple of blacklight posters. And over on the side, somehow this turned into a teenage boys room from the 70s. So I also have an original Farrah Fawcett poster because you have to have that. The official name for the room though is the lounge. And if this is going to be a bachelor pad lounge, then down here, I also have some classic Playboys from the 1960s and 1970s that I picked up in a state sale. And that's actually what these are. Those are not records. So those are all classic Playboys. But I do want to point out this unit right here. I've been looking for an appropriate coffee table, haven't found one. So I decided to reutilize my original stereo stand. This is not Ikea. This is the Better Homes and Gardens cube storage. Uh, it has the same measurements as the Ikea and these are sold at Walmart. So you can pick these up anywhere. And I will tell you they are equivalent uh, quality as the Ikea. They work just as well. And this was my first record stand, stereo stand. I uh, used to sit out in the living room when I first got into the hobby. I had my uh, my turntable and my receiver up top and kept my records underneath and it worked very very well for quite some time. So I highly recommend those and they're a lot more accessible than the IKEA. So scrolling around the room a little bit, um, you've seen this before on some of my videos. So up top I have a dual 1229. I bought that in really rough condition the plinth had collapsed, it had a lot of mechanical problems, but I fixed that up. It's working good as new. Comes with an original Shure V15 Type 3 cartridge. Underneath I have Macintosh 2505 and a C28, the classic solid state from 1969. Um, I have a JVC cassette player that I don't remember the model of at this moment. It, uh, I purchased it in the original box and it came from a, a distributor who had this as a showroom model and I'll tell you there's absolutely nothing wrong with it it's an absolutely pristine condition I, I honestly don't think it ever been used so that was a phenomenal purchase uh, let me move over to the other side of the room and swing over to show you the record collection so swinging around now these are Ikea's and up top we have more Ikea and more everything uh, these are actually four of the IKEA picture ledges that they currently sell. Uh, you can store 14 records facing out on top of on top of these, and they're deep enough and sturdy enough that you can actually stack these about five deep. So as a, an actual storage solution, it actually works pretty well. I mean, you can get 70 records up there, and it'll hold up pretty tight. Uh, over here, this is my CD collection at least the, most of my CD collection. Uh, this is actually three pieces that I picked up from Amazon. And they all fit together very nicely in these triangle shapes. On top of my, my Ikea, um, I have these, these half height cube things that I use for record bins, flip bins. And I have flip bins on both sides. That's all A to Z basically. Underneath, I'm not gonna go through everything that I have down here. Um, 
certain artists get their own section if they have enough. I have a couple of genre sections, you know, the usual kind of stuff. Uh, the only thing I'll point out with these IKEA shelves, make sure that you put the long board this way and not this way. If you put it across, it'll hold up pretty well. If you put it up and down and keep the short ones one cube width, those wooden dowels don't hold up very well over time, and sooner or later they're going to give out. That's where you run into problems. So make sure you assemble it correctly. Um, as you can see, I left one of the supports out here. That was to fit my cassette racks. Still looking for a couple more of these so I can stack them up inside of there. But uh, it, it's held up real well without that, that additional piece in there. And I don't seem to have any problems with it. So no problems there. Scrolling over to the other side of the room, a couple of other little pieces. Uh, we have the 1970s popcorn plastic smiley face. We have a Gumby and a Mr. Bill Magic 8-Ball Polaroid. Uh, that down there is actually a CD case that I picked up in an estate sale as well. Everything seems to come from estate sales, including, including the speakers here. Uh, this was kind of the steel of the century. These are Klipsch Academies. Uh, they were designed in the mid-1990s to serve as a center channel speaker if you happen to have sort of the, uh, the classic heritage line of speakers. So your, your Cornwalls, um, your La Scalas, your Heresies, stuff like that, they'll match up very well with these. That's what they were designed for. But when you take that center channel that, that lays horizontally and you flip it up, it turns the directionality of the horn and actually these work exceptionally well as a 2.0 stereo system and I picked those up in an estate sale for for ten dollars a piece uh, <laughs> they go for about 250 bucks at least and they're super super rare but uh, I put the Bob Kreitz uh, titanium tweeters and the capacitor upgrades so those are sounding really, really nice, and they match up with that Macintosh system perfectly well. Uh, moving out of the lounge, we have we have the beaded curtain. So that was, again, 1970s type thing. And one other thing I'll mention, everything I have in here from the light strips that are sitting inside the picture ledge here that I picked up from Walmart to the the actual regular light that I have here and the lava lamp and the black lights are all Alexa controlled. So I, I can do all that with voice control or I can do it remotely. The other thing I have, and I'll just show it real quick here, on the back of the turntable, I also have a sensor. And you can see on the turntable itself, this is the other half, such that when I pull off the top of the turntable, it'll immediately change all the lights and set the mood for here. And then this is going to turn itself off, I think, when I put that back on. Yes, it does. And now we're left with just the regular lights. So let's, uh, let's wander through the beaded curtain and move into the living room and check out the gear that we have in there. Just a quick stop in the hallway on the way through, I wanted to point out, I do have a 1906 Victrola, all mechanical, that uh, it, it's all in working order. I've gone through and refurbished the whole thing. I keep this around just, to, just for historical purposes. It's very interesting to listen to how people 115 years ago used to listen to music. Uh, this is sort of the first home units at the dawn of the recording industry. And it's, uh, it's a very interesting sound and I'm actually pretty impressed by the fact that it's all mechanical. Uh, one thing I'll say is that it's actually really, really loud, which kind of surprised me in a big way. Uh, you control the volume actually by opening and closing these doors. Uh, if they're closed, it's real quiet. You open them wide open and it gets real, real loud. But I do have a small collection of 78s that I keep in this box right here. Uh, there's a couple of other binders inside. Maybe there's some storage in there. But I just, I don't really use it very often, but it's, it's interesting to see it. And interesting to listen to it as sort of a, put things into an historical context. context. And in fact, I got one other piece. I'll, I'll put the other piece in the, the video here before I get to the main system. 
just to keep along this theme. So let's swing around over there. Hold on a sec. So out here in the living room, I have a 1939 RCA 1911. Um, I've gone through, done a lot of work on it, uh, got it mostly working, but it's still just not quite there. Uh, I, I'm still, I'm still trying. But this is another one of those historical pieces that I was curious to see what the music sounded like to people back in the day. You know, we all have our hi-fi systems and sit here as audio files to try and eke out, uh, you know, every single little detail. But once upon a time, people still enjoyed music in uh, very low fidelity means. So I, I was curious to see what this would sound like. I, I've had it working enough at certain points to be able to get an idea and pull in some AM radio stations. But uh, very nice piece. It's a royal pain in the ass and I don't have tools to test it, but it's, it's nice and I, I'm glad to have it in my collection. So let's, uh, let's go from there and swing over real quick to the main system in the living room. So here we have, we'll start with the speakers. Um, these are Klipsch KG4s. Uh, again, sort of estate sale type things. I also have the Bob Kreitz upgrades on these with the titanium tweeters and the capacitor kits. Very, very nice sounding speakers for the price. They're ultimately not what I want, but they match very, very well with the main system here. In the main system, this is a this is the Fluoroscan Pioneers, uh, 7800 series for the most part. Late 70s, early 80s. Um, have the amplifier, the tuner. This is a uh, 850 cassette deck. I also have the reverb unit. I have the digital signal processor and the clock. Uh, one thing I will tell people, if you think you can't do hi-fi on a budget, I, I had a lot of determination and a lot of persistence. I used to collect, I used to check the Craigslist and offer up and Facebook marketplace and everything. I checked it multiple times a day. And I picked up this whole stack and the clock as well as a Sansui stereo rack. Not, not this, but a Sansui stereo rack and a pair of HPM 40 Pioneer speakers. And I got the whole thing in working condition for $50. Five zero dollars deal of the century I'll never find that again but you never know uh, as far as the matching pioneer uh, RT 707 reel to reel deck uh, again this is one of those things I did pay better money for this but for what I paid it also came with a stack of reel to reels that were all uh, 1980s reel to reels towards the end of that format and those proved to be very, very valuable. And I wound up making about $600 from that purchase. So you can do, you can do hi-fi on a budget if you're willing to put in the effort. Uh, continuing around, I have a Pioneer PL560 for my turntable in here, running a Nagaoka 110 cartridge. I also have a Mayfair uh, 8-track player recorder. I have a Kyocera mid 1980s CD player. This is actually the first one on the market that would play burn CDs. Um, headphones, I don't even remember what these were, to be honest. I don't really use them. And, you know, just the. This is a little Amazon rack. I highly recommend these. They're a little bit expensive at $25, $35, but they work very well. And that's a now playing brick that I also paid like ten dollars from amazon i do highly recommend those as well uh scrolling around the living room a little bit and i'm not sure if i can get this whole thing in the picture but i do have a display uh, this is the rails on here are from a company called 12 inch art i, I will tell you they are overpriced they, they work okay. I did have to get a lot more tape to get everything to stick properly. But uh, you, you, can do, you can do a DIY on these yourself. In fact, at some point, I'll probably go through and uh, do a video on how to, how to do that yourself. And then over here, I have, I have some DVDs, um, live, live music. I have uh, Pink Floyd The Wall, some concerts. Um, this is the CD collection from Grand Theft Auto Vice City. 
kind of uh, one of the things that I love. And I do have a flip bin in here as well. Uh, I have some storage, some cube storage. I flipped one of them up. And these are these are handy for heavy rotation and when guests come over, things to put on. So that works very well. Uh, I also have my guitar sitting over here as well. I don't really play. I'm actually a saxophone guy, but decided to try and learn guitar. Not doing particularly well, but it works. So that's the main system. And that's uh, that's sort of the abbreviated and better version of the music walkthrough. So I'll try and put this together and uh, post it up and I'll see you on the flip side.